So what I have here is the Zalman ZM RS6F uh, five channel surround sound headset. This is the USB version. I guess the version doesn't matter too much. But with all of the plastic in these, and their three little speakers that they have per side for a total of six speakers, I find that they're a little too tinny and high pitched for me. They actually hurt my ears a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pillow batting. I'm going to show you how to cut it to the proper size and install it into your headset, which will actually help get rid of that high pitched on, on the upper end and should help with the bass just a little bit. So I will show you the tools that we need and how to accomplish this. So here we have the tools of the trade. This is some batting that you can get at Michaels or Walmart. It's fairly inexpensive and you can also do this trick with other speakers too. So you'll have plenty to do that with. And what we need to do is each of the pockets that the speaker sits in is an inch and a half in diameter or just under. So you can either use a tape measure or you can do it an easier way and grab one of these um, spacers out of a CD or DVD spindle. And these are almost exactly an inch and a half. So we can just measure our batting using that. Of course, use scissors to cut the batting. And for disassembly of the headset, we're going to need a Phillips screwdriver with a small Phillips tip on it. And we're going to need either a very small flat bladed screwdriver or a knife that is thin enough and strong enough to where it won't break because we're going to have to do just a little bit of prying with it. Now first off, I'm going to start with um, making the little batting pucks that will go in behind the six speakers that we have. So just take your batting, rip a chunk off, and you want to make sure that it's not too thick. Or if there's a real thick heavy spot, you can kind of rip that out. An eighth of an inch is about as thick as you want to go, and that might even be a little too thick. We want to make sure that there aren't any real thick heavy clumps, that it's somewhat transparent, but not so much so that it's going to fall apart. Now we can take our piece and take a puck, or a, our DVD CD um, spacer and hold it right on top. We can si simply go around and cut it to the dimension that we need. Don't be worried if you go a little smaller than the spacer or a little bigger. And of course we're going to need a total of six. And there you have it. There's one. Doesn't look perfect, doesn't need to. Um, I wouldn't recommend using a cotton ball because a cotton ball might be way too dense and heavy. You might be able to fluff it up and use it. Now these headsets are extremely easy to disassemble. Just remember that this will void your warranty if you take these apart and work on them yourself. First thing we're going to want to do is get off this leather earpiece. Easy way to do it is just push your finger down inside and reach onto this threading where the two pieces are joined together. Grab and pull. And don't pull very hard, but work work it off all the way around. And there we go. What I like to do is put the screws inside of this earpiece so I keep that handy where I can use it. Now we have this collar that has four tangs on it. And it's um, close together on the top and the bottom and far apart on the ends so you can have an easier time putting it back together and you turn this counterclockwise. Sometimes these come off easy, sometimes you really have to fight them. And I like to keep it right side up so I know exactly how it goes right back on without thinking about it. Set that off to the side and grab the Phillips screwdriver. Now we have four screws in here total. You want to make sure to get them out all the way because we don't want to break this plastic housing. and the last one right here. Then what we're going to do is tip this upside down in my hand and try to get these screws to come out. Shake it a little bit. One, two, three came out. The fourth one didn't. Nope, the fourth one's still in there, but if it doesn't want to come out, we can just leave it. Just be careful not to lose it. Now, we take our knife or our screwdriver. Be very careful. It's easy to gouge your hand doing this. If you notice on either end, it's got a little space in here where we're going to have to separate the plastic to disassemble. Now, my hands aren't strong enough to pry these apart, so I take the knife, put it in between, push back a little bit, and then kind of lift up on the knife. What we're looking for is we want to hear that popping sound, letting us know that it comes apart. Do the same to the other side. 
and there we go both sides have popped off and I have already put batting in this I'm just doing this as a demonstration to show you how so we'll remove the batting and we'll take a look inside here because I'm sure you're curious as to what this looks like now here we have three speakers I've got to be careful not to pull this too far apart because these speaker wires would be easy to break off of the speakers one two three and there's one wire here that isn't connected this is the USB version by the way um, that would go to what I guess would be a subwoofer if this had one and if you can look down in here you can see that these are little holes where the batting will go and you can see that that little DVD CD spacer fits almost perfectly in there now what we're going to do is just take our batting shove it in there just as good as we can get it and one little trick I found because we have the speaker wire that we have to go around is you take your one one of your battings per side and just cut it down the middle and make it kinda like a Pac-Man put it around the speaker wire you can take your pen or your knife to help you out if you need it to help push it around the wire that way it covers up every portion that it can and then we can just simply take it and put it back together now let's make sure to keep this wire in order there we go and you want to listen for both sides as they should snap into place there we go now it snapped into place now we do the reverse procedure to put it back together and if it didn't snap into place it might be because you have way too much batting or you're giving improper pressure of course you can't hold me responsible if something breaks while you're doing this and of course you take your screwdriver and you want to be careful because these metal screws go into some thin plastic and if you over tighten these then you could um, break the housing or strip out the threads in the plastic then of course if you have a loose screw in here it might rattle around and sound worse I'm just rechecking a couple of these screws just to make sure and there we go now we can place the collar back on of course you put it on and turn it clockwise to lock it back into place but we also have to get this leather earpiece back on what I find is a little easier for me instead of just putting the collar on and then trying to get this earpiece back on is I take the collar set it inside this earpiece and put the earpiece on before I reassemble the collar because this is a pretty tight fit you want to be careful not to rip the earpiece while doing this so just take your time and there we go now remember it's narrower here and longer on the sides so we want to make sure to put the narrow portions onto the narrow side of the clip and you're gonna to have to grab this really tight and turn it clockwise and I actually heard it snap which the camera probably didn't pick up but you snap it back into place to make sure it's done and you go and you do the same thing on the other side and then give them a try and see what they sound like now this isn't going to make a night and day difference but for those of us who do notice it being high pitched it will make enough of a difference to make it worthwhile thanks for watching please be sure to rate and comment on the video and also um, if you have any suggestions please be sure to give those as well thank you